Well, hello there and welcome to the Christmas edition of the Unmasked Podcast. I hope you're doing well today. I hope you're doing Christmassy stuff, feeling festive. Because we are, when this podcast comes out, seven days till Christmas. Yay. <laughs> and it's just like, well, we're recording this days before, so we don't feel that festive, do we, Nicola? No. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know already, I'm filming with Nicola today for this Christmas edition because you're here and I asked you. Yes. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Lovely. Basically, guys, you guys who listen to the podcast, normally I would just bring a guest on and uh, talk to them about different things. Pretty much this is all Christmas related. You know, it's a Christmas podcast. And I don't know, I just wanted to be a bit festive and do something a bit different instead of uh, posting a video about what it's like to be autistic at Christmas and things, which I did last year. Uh, I, I don't know, just wanted to chat to someone about Christmas stuff, mm. really. Um, some of the things we're going to talk about today, I'm actually going to tell you ahead of time, because you don't know the plan, No. mainly. Um, what things can be tricky for autistic people at Christmas in ways to help? Basically, we'll just talk about that. This one was my idea, this next one, a Christmas dinner tier list. I'm quite looking forward to it. I'm yeah. so gassed. I'm actually excited to talk about food. It's unreal. <laughs> and pretty much we're going to round it off with a top three of movies and songs. I only really know two songs of what they're in my top two. I'll try and think of a third one as we're talking. <laughs> oh man, you're not as prepared as me. I mean, I literally had to Google what goes on a Christmas dinner. So you had to ask me as well. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, just to start this podcast off, I might as well ask you, you know, what was your Christmas like as a kid? I'm um, busy most of the time. Um, so every Christmas we used to get up. Um, when I was really young, my mum used to make us have breakfast first before mm -hmm. we were allowed to go like look at presents. Mm -hmm. So you used to get up, have breakfast, go into the living room, open up presents with like my mum and my brother and then from there we'd get washed, get dressed and be at my nana's for like half ten in the morning because we had like a lot of family come around mm. so it would be like family would like well the, the certain the certain people that come around still every year but right back when I was younger it used to be like lots of extended family so like my nana's sisters her kids, her kids' as kids, like it used to be like cousins, second cousins, third cousins, like it so, used to be hectic. So was this like in where your nan lives now? Yeah, so her house is quite small. Yeah. So you can imagine the amount of people we used to squeeze into their kitchen in the living room. It, it's pretty much like a path to like a utility cupboard or something like that. That's how it, it feels so small to me, but I don't know whether that's because I'm pretty much like a surfboard yeah but the the house itself like it has really 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 high ceilings like if I, i'm six foot and if i reached up i couldn't touch the ceilings does it's it actually have high ceilings really high ceilings it's just like width wise it's just not very big do you know what i've never noticed actually though how tall the ceilings are i think when that, when we actually go over to go see them i think that's the thing i'm gonna measure i'm literally gonna go on my tiptoes just try and touch the ceiling yeah like it is they're really tall ceilings um but yeah so we used to go up my nana's on christmas morning <coughs> we used to we always had christmas dinner at my nana's um, once family and stuff had gone um later on on the eve late afternoon evening my nana used to do like a bit like a tea party kind of thing so there would be like cake and like sweets and stuff and then people like my mum's friends and my godparents and my brother's godparents would come with their kids yeah it was quite hectic from start to finish and then we used to like leave my nana's at like eight nine o'clock on a night so we'd been there for like he used to be there for like a good like 10 11 hours Obviously, as the years go back, gone by, there was like less people obviously go at my nana's now because like a lot of the kids that used to get dragged there by their parents are now growing up, they have their own families or like they're at university or like there is like the, the odd handful of people that still come to my nana's on Christmas day. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, I've been to quite a few of yours now, well, seven. Yeah. Oh, no, oh no, 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 it'll be seven this year. Yeah. It'll be seven in 2020. Um, but we usually see like, I don't know, you, you, uncles and things like that you know more extended family which 
To be honest, I can remember the faces. I, I can never remember. Mm. The, I can never remember the names. Yeah. It's it's not because I don't like. Uh, it's not because I don't like your family or anything. It's just I don't remember people's yeah, names. Yeah, we have quite large family. To be <laughs> fair, there is a lot of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which actually, in comparison to myself, um, I think you already know this. But for those who don't know. I didn't really go out to see fa family around Christmas. Mm. Um, maybe my parents will uh, say that I'm wrong, you know. I'll mention this part of the pod and uh, ask them. Because I can't actually remember a time where family would visit us on Christmas Day or uh, we would go to see others on Christmas Day. Mm. It just wasn't the thing for us. Because the thing is, I do have a large extended family. I just never see them unless it's a wedding or a funeral but mm. but pretty much I get up have breakfast open like the Christmas presents underneath the tree pretty much I'm the designated person that gets the Christmas presents underneath the tree I still am even though I'm 27 <laughs> I'm still on the floor getting Christmas presents out yeah pretty much that's it pretty much that is my did job. you do that as like a child though like you would have the tree like presents under the tree because in my house in my mum's we used to have sofas so I would have one sofa and Adam's presents would be on the other sofa and we used to like have our own separate sort of areas to open presents in yeah yeah I think it was just so that we didn't have to sit and go oh this one's for you this one's for you like pass them round oh, right. it was just a case of right here's your stack of presents right here's your stack of presents open them and I could just sit in the middle and collect all the wrapping paper up <laughs> no no we never did that uh, because I'm I was obviously the youngest in the family pretty much I was the what that my parents said pretty much you know you can control the presence or maybe I just assert that role for myself maybe <laughs> as being like the uh, instead of like the fat controller from Thomas the Tank Engine I was the present I suppose controller. yeah I suppose it's all for you and your sister you've got quite a big age gap where me and my brother only have a couple of years yeah so yeah. I think it was that thing of keep, keep everything separate so then we couldn't fight so like if I accidentally opened something that was for Adam but then I wanted it. It was a case of we couldn't fight about it because his presents are on his side, and my presents are on my side, and that's like the end of the conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very true. But uh, pretty much for us, it was literally just a case of I would go and get the presents and ship them round to people. Mm. But then after that, we'd just have Christmas dinner and play with presents and do things with presents and you know watch the film or the TV show that was on. Uh, the TV at that point, unless it was like a games console oh, that I bought. Yeah. What were you going to say? I was going to say, speaking of TV, that was another thing that at my nana's that we always used to do. Like, I know some people like to watch The Queen's Speech, but do, have you noticed that every, well, I don't know if it's the same now, but a couple of years ago, every year, the film Mary Poppins or like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang or something was on on Christmas Day. And my auntie used to make us put it on. And before that, it used to be Top of the Pops Christmas specials. Oh, yeah, yeah. So she used to force us to watch them. And even though she would be in a completely another room, we'd always have to have that on. And it was kind of like, well, you're not even watching it. And if you dare turn that channel over, God, she'd be straight back in remote, snatched out your hand back on the channel. And it was like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, God. No, we never, we never had that. Yeah. We never had that. Uh, maybe it's because obviously I, I was pretty much king of the roost. I think it was because you you were like literally the baby of the family. Mm. So yeah, I was the baby of the family for a very long time. I had sixteen going on seventeen good years of it. I was literally the last born child until Rachel had kids, my auntie. <laughs> And then we all know what happened there. And um, I got pushed to the bottom of the list. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And she never goes, she never stops talking about it. I had 16 good years of being the golden child and now I don't get anything and I'm stuck with you. No, the difference is now is that it goes in the pecking order. So um, obviously like <clears throat> out of my, my grandparents' kids, it's like my auntie's the favourite out of her and my mum. Mm. And then out of the grandkids, I'm the favourite grandchild out of me and my brother and then obviously out of the younger ones our Thomas is the favourite because he's the great grandchild and he's the baby but he, he is a cute <laughs> grandchild though you know so probably it's because a... he's well behaved and does as he's told <laughs> not exactly like the exactly as long as he gets red sauce as long as he gets his red sauce <laughs> <laughs> oh god I wonder if he's going to put it on his Christmas dinner well 
I guess what I could move on to is asking you the question of weirdest Christmas gifts you have received. Weirdest Christmas gifts. Weirdest Christmas. Or just one. You can name one because I've only got. Well, actually, I've got I've got one and a story. I don't really. I don't think I've ever got a weird gift. Oh, weird. No, <laughs> I didn't think it was weird, but right. my mum was really creeped out by it. So one year, I must have been about six or seven. I got um this doll, and it was like it was like a talking doll, but you had like metal sensors in its teeth, and you got like little objects. You got like a bottle. You got like food and stuff. And when you would put the object in its mouth, the two metal parts were connected. It would make like. Mm, that's nice, mommy. That's a nice banana. Oh, it used to go, mmm, milk. I like milk, mommy. And it used to really creep my mum out. I, I can't be honest. That's <laughs> the one thing I think when we have kids, I'm not looking forward to when it's like, mmm, I like the milk, mommy. It's just like, oh, for God's sake. Yeah, but this doll was pretty but why, creepy. Why, why, why was she freaked out? Was it because of the noise or because of the way it looked? Or? Because of the way it talked, but also the fact that it was quite like a large-ish doll. So like, if I just stood this doll up in the middle of the room with its back to you, it would look like a small child. Alright. So she was a bit like really freaked out by it and she did not really appreciate the gift. <laughs> but I love that doll. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. To be honest, you know about my gift. Um, but for some context, um, I can't remember how old I was. I must have been... Oh, when did I, how old was I when I met you? 21? 21, yeah. I think I must have been 22 or 23, I think. I was around that age anyway. One year, uh, me and a load of uh, friends of ours, I think it was five or six of our friends, decided to do a secret, secret Santa. Santa. Mm -hmm. A secret Santa. And the person that orchestrated the Christmas Santa, Secret Santa, why did I say Christmas Santa? I don't know. But the person that orchestrated this um, obviously gave the names of the person you were buying for. So I bought for my best friend Diana and, you know, everyone else got picked. And... The person that orchestrated it picked, well, got picked me. They, they got me as their secret Santa. So basically, we met up at the Five Swans in Newcastle, mm -hmm. in Newcastle upon Tyne. Basically, it's a Wellspoons, but you know, it's, it's not bad, Five Swans, or at least the last time I went was like two years ago. But, it, you know, it was the place that we used to do start off starter drinks. Pretty much. Anyway, we were exchanging gifts and, you know, the person that orchestrated the thing gave me mine. I unwrapped it in the middle of this Weatherspoons. Unwrapped it and uh, for those who are young, you know, sorry, but I got given a massive dildo. <laughs> I remember that. It was hilarious. <laughs> the thing is, it was too though, for the people we got, we went out and got like quite thoughtful gifts and really put yeah. effort into it. So you got the purple dildo. <laughs> and someone... it, wasn't, it wasn't purple. It was purple. It wasn't purple. Oh, no. no, it wasn't in black. Oh, oh, I thought it was purple. No. Oh. I should remember it was my gift. Yeah, but then didn't someone get a, a, a spatula or something because they used to flip bacon with the fingers? <laughs> And then someone else got a copy of Spider-Man 2. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, I'm just like... Was, yeah. Actually, actually um, the person... I think it was Max that got... I can't remember who... I think it was Max that bought Lewis, the person that orchestrated this, the copy of Spider-Man 2. Yeah. I believe. Because uh, everyone knows that Spider-Man 2 is the best Spider-Man film. Yeah, of course, of course. I'll tell you another gift. And this is actually my story. It's a weird gift, but I think it's actually kind of meaningful. So our friend Beth um, bought Max. Well, he, she wrapped it up, didn't she? Yeah. Or did she? I can't remember. No, I, I think she did. She wrapped it, this present up and Max unwrapped it. And basically it was like, it was a car, it was like one of those cardboard boxes that you see at a supermarket where they like hold tinned stuff I believe it was like canned tomato soup or something like that mm. I, I, I probably am wrong but that was just the vision that I had in my mind but basically Beth gave Max five pounds but in five pences glued onto this box 
Oh, and it was yeah. like it was like I O U. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty much like all of the times that uh, Beth had uh, like asked for money or like vice versa, just from like nights out and stuff. Yeah. And it was it was just like that's actually ingenious. <laughs> it was weird. Don't get me wrong. When you actually looked at it, it was really weird. Like I was like, oh, it's really weird, but it's actually like the coolest thing ever. It yeah. was really, really, really nice and really thoughtful. And uh, yeah. So I guess my last question before we get into the other stuff is. What do you like the most and like the least about Christmas? The thing is, I'm not really that bothered about getting gifts, but I like getting gifts for other people. Mm. Like, I like being able to like, buy something that people wouldn't normally buy for themselves. I mean, it might not necessarily be something that people like, but at least I try. <laughs> yeah. um, I suppose th there's nothing that I don't necessarily like about Christmas as such. I suppose it's different if you've got like kids and stuff because I know you get dragged to like the nativities and the Christmas players and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think the only thing that I really didn't like about Christmas is obviously over the years um, going to church on Christmas Eve because one, it's really packed and overcrowded. It's like the one day yeah, that everyone goes to church. I'm not really that religious so I'm a bit like, don't really want to be here but I go to keep like my nana happy and it's just, <sighs> I don't know, like I don't mind seeing like the Christmas carols and stuff, but it's just so prolonged and I'm just like, oh, you're there for like hours. Well, I think for me, like stuff like that, it's good every so often, but not, I couldn't do it every single year. That yeah. would kill, that would literally kill me. Um, I remember like, I don't know, we were asked to go to the church to dare uh, for like a, uh, like a, it was, I don't know what, it was a like nativity or something. And I was like, oh yeah, we'll go. And you were like, oh no, I don't want to go. But it's like, I don't know, it's nice. It wasn't a nativity, it was our Ruby and Jake were doing, you know when they get the orange and they put the candle in and they decorate the orange? Yeah. They were doing that. I can't remember what, what it's actually called. Um, Colin goes to Christmas present, I don't know. I don't know. They, they, were, <laughs> doing, oh, they were doing something with like, where they put the, or, the candle in the orange and I don't know, and I was just like, I've seen our Ruby and Jake do it so many times, like, I really don't want to go and do it again, because it's not just that bit you can stay for, you've got to stay for it all, so you've got to stay for all, like, the uh, more religious stuff, like, all the readings and the stuff, and then you've got to stay for all, like, the Christmas carols, which I don't mind if it's Christmas carols that I know, but a, a lot of them, I don't know if it's everywhere, but especially in the church that my nana and them go to, it's, like, all the really old... Christmas carols that nobody like the obscure ones that no one really knows and you can tell nobody knows because they just go mm, 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 yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah fair enough but I guess for me when it comes to stuff that I like I just like the general kind of feeling they get around at Christmas I to be honest for the last few years I've been an utter Scrooge I just can't see couldn't see the point of Christmas but I think now as I'm getting older it's just like I don't know, it's just it's just kinda nice um looking back on stuff. Yeah. And kinda feeling like Yeah, this is Christmas. Uh, mainly just with my family. It's just nice um having us all round the table and, you know, eating and stuff because it's very rare now for uh, well especially for my family to be all in one place because mm. we're all busy doing stuff. So yeah. uh, for me that's like the thing that I like about Christmas. The thing I dislike about Christmas, I feel is the hype. People hype it so mm. much, and it's just like, oh, just I can't be. By the time you get to Christmas Day, I just can't be bothered. Yeah, like when you're building up to Christmas, it tends to be obviously you tend to feel better than actually on Christmas. Mm. I think obviously it's different if you've got little kids because they're excited for Santa and stuff like that, and you have like that whole magical element to it. Oh yeah. But I just feel like, obviously, as you get older, it's a bit like everyone gets so excited and everyone's like, oh, it's nearly Christmas, and you get excited because you're buying presents, and then you get excited because you're decorating your house, but then when the actual day comes, it's like, well, in a few hours, it's going to be over. <laughs> then what? <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. But I guess I guess for me, it's just, it's just one of those things. Another thing that um, I'm not a big fan on, and it actually moves us quite nicely onto the next topic of discussion, uh, things that can be tricky for autistic people in ways to help, is presence. So, by the way, before we get into this, you know, Nicola is my fiance, she's not on the spectrum, no. I am, but I kind of want your input because I think you know having an outside view is actually a good thing mm. you know for me I find it really weird 
when people watch you open in presents. Mm -hmm. I think it's that, like, it puts that pressure on you that you've got to, like, like what's inside. So even if you don't like what they've given you, you've still got to kind of act like you do. And you don't want to seem ungrateful because someone's got out the way to buy you something. But at the same time, it's a bit like, that's nice, Deborah, but I didn't need another pair of socks. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a bit like, oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, and, and also if it's like a surprise as well, but they don't know they're getting it. Uh, I'm just talking about like from just talking to the parents with their autistic kids and stuff. Like if they don't know what they're getting, they kind of just instantly dislike it as well. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was not like that, but I was a bit baffled, as especially as a kid, <laughs> where if I open something, I'm like, oh, what's that? It just comes across as like ungrateful, even though I'm not. I'm just like, what's this? <laughs> yeah, I think though, for a lot of like, especially young children as well, like just in general, I feel like if you have like a lot of people that are handing them stuff and then they're like opening stuff and then it's a bit like, I feel like they get overwhelmed. Yeah. Especially like, quite young children, because I know like, when our Thomas and Jake, not so much our Ruby because she was quite a social child, not so much a social preteen, but she was a social child. Um, yeah, yeah. But like Jake and our Thomas, they were like. They weren't bothered really, were they? Well, Jake used to cry and used to have <gasps> yeah. run and hide because he didn't like all the people there and he didn't like the fact that like people were trying to like get him to open presents. He kind of like used to like open like a few things and then want to focus on those things. Where, like, our Ruby would just grab whatever you give her, really, but our Ruby's a bit spoiled, so it's a different scenario. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, w I was going to say, I think that's the thing for some people on the spectrum as well. Like, if, you know, people are asking them to open presents and they don't want to, it's just like, oh, God, really, you know, what is this all about? Actually, a way to help with this whole kind of thing is... You know, if you know your kid doesn't like surprises, you know, let them see the present, let them pick out the present mm -hmm. beforehand. Now, I think the reason why people may be like, oh, it's not a, that's a bad idea, it ruins the surprise. It's like, but it's a present for your kid, so surely on the day it makes it easier. Yeah, like I can see both sides because it's like, as a parent, about like, if I was spice at my child something and it was like a big surprise, like it was like a really big present, like you kind of know that they want it, but you haven't necessarily told them that you've got it. It's kind of like you kind of want to see that like surprise happiness when they open it. So mm. I can understand that side of it, but also you can understand, I suppose as a parent, your main focus should be to make sure that your child is as comfortable as possible. Yeah. At the same time. So like you don't even have to like show them what you bought, but you could explain like, look, you, you say for instance you wanted the new playstation that's what you're going to get on christmas day it's going to be one of the bigger presents that you've got you can even show the wrapping paper it's going to be wrapped in so then at least they know mm -hmm. that when they open that present that's what's going to be in there yeah no no exactly i think that's really great i don't know why but i feel a lot easier opening stuff when there's less people Maybe it's just because, obviously, like, I didn't, like, have a, mm. a, a palanthium of... Well, I don't even... Is palanthium even a word? I don't think it is. I don't know. A plethora. A plethora of presents. An I'm just going to say audience. <laughs> An audience of people um, seeing me open presents. I guess that's probably the thing for me. But I guess, as well, uh, around the whole present thing, don't build up that expectation for yourself. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I think it's very easy to do, but I think... But I suppose yeah. people is... I suppose people make that mistake of, like, thinking, like, especially with, like, younger children and stuff, or, like, even... Well, I suppose it doesn't matter what age you are, that, like, everyone thinks that because you get a present, you have to open it there and then. Mm. But I suppose for someone on the, like, on the spectrum who, say, might like routine, and obviously Christmas Day can be, like, a day where that routine kind of doesn't always stay very structured... Yeah, plus, like, all of the other days that come with it as well. Yeah. Like, it's just a case of, like, maybe... Like, you could do, maybe say, right, every hour when you get up, so from 9 o'clock till 10 o'clock, you can choose what presents you want to open, open them. If you only want to open a few, only open a few. If you want to open them all, obviously open them all. But then you could just, like, sort of spread it out over a few days and then that way they're not... People aren't as overwhelmed. Mm. 
with having to open, say, 50 presents when they can open 10 today, 5 tomorrow, 20 the day after that, like, they can choose. Yeah. And I think as well when you've got so much choice, so like say, I don't know, I know I'm using child as an example, but obviously this affects adults as well. Yeah. yeah. But like say you had a, I don't know, a teenager, he's been given a, an Xbox, he's been given all these games for it, then he's also been given all this other stuff. It's a case of if that, if he then wants to focus on just that Xbox in a select few games, it's a case of don't be like, well, you've got other stuff, oh, I bought you so much stuff and you just bothered with that, I shouldn't, yeah. like, is that, like, I'll just let them focus on a few things at a time. Yeah, no, definitely. No, that's actually a really great point, actually. Actually, moving on to routine, actually, mm -hmm. because it is a thing that does come up quite a lot, surprisingly, um, when you go on to um, autistic community forums and things. Well, not even forums, just Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Literally just Twitter. Change to routine is like, especially around Christmas, it's just horrendous, because it's like, you know, some people are here, there and everywhere, they're going to see a different family when they wouldn't normally go see a different family. It depends on the family, you know, like, if it was mine, you know, you don't see that many people, but, you know, there could be, yeah, where there's tons of people. And, you know, I think when you have a lot of people, it's very hard to keep to, like, set times and just set things when the person's usually in, like, you know, has a routine of doing stuff. Yeah. I think mainly it's just that period between, well, Christmas, the, the gloominess that is, like, between Christmas Day and New Year's, and, you know, it, it's just manic, really. So, for me, personally, I think, you know, if you can keep some form of routine, that'd be great. Like, even if it's not... Even if it's just their normal routine, it still could be better for them in the long run. Yeah. But I think ultimately, though, you know, it's kind of important to introduce bits of Christmas over time. Even if it takes years, like, for example, oh, oh Christina McGuinness, um, Paddy McGuinness's wife. Mm. They, like, slowly introduced Christmas with their kids to the point where last day they actually had a tree in there front room yeah <laughs> like, i suppose that's something you don't think about because obviously all, all all the rest of the year you don't have this big tree you don't have all these lights you don't have like all this decoration and yeah. then one day just gets chucked up there it's a bit like oh it's like why is that there you know what's well, you know it it doesn't look right sort of but it's not mm -hmm. even just that it's just you know but i think that what's worse though is that you like eventually you get used to having this thing there and then when it gets taken away the space just feels Empty. Empty. Yeah, I know. But I think I think for me, like, kind of, um, my kind of tip and advice really is, you know, to keep things, you know, as, you know, normal as possible for the person. Uh, something I think people need to consider is, like, having a space where there's literally, like, nothing to do with Christmas. Yeah. I don't understand these... But I get that some people like to do every room in the house like Christmassy. I don't get it. No, I, I don't I don't really understand it. Like I think like as long as it's in like your main room where everyone can kind of enjoy it, mm -hmm. I don't see why you need to bring it like into bedrooms and stuff. Like those should be spaces where you can feel like you're safe. It's like that for me. When I was growing up, my my bedroom was my like safety place, if you know what I mean. Right, yeah. So like if like, I, when I was a kid, I used to think if you turn the light off and, like, ear downstairs and you had to get upstairs, that there'd be, like, a monster chasing you up the stairs. So, I, for me, once I got into my room, that monster couldn't get in, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, for me, like, if, like, someone has, like, someone doesn't like the intensity of, like, all the Christmas stuff, sure, it's best just to confine it to one space and then the rest of the house is basically a no Christmas zone kind of thing. Yeah, or... Or at the very least have one designated place that's not filled with Christmas stuff. Because I think obviously, you know, it's a massive change for the person and, you know, to have the whole place decorated with Christmas stuff is just... Uh... Yeah. Really. It's... it's I, I, I'm just going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here. I don't personally understand why people would fill the house full of Christmas. Christmas stuff. I, I think realistically you only need one tree to put presents under. I don't understand people that put trees in every like bedroom. 
put trees in every bedroom. Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. Like there's people like there's a <laughs> Oh. There is a girl that I watch on YouTube and she is like a really sweet, nice girl. Yeah. But at the same time it was like a kind of her basically they have a tree in the in their living room, then the mum has a tree in her bedroom, just like a little one, not like a massive one, but like a good three, four foot tree with decorations and lights. So so, then so, her, so basically uh, it's basically like a, a like a like a child. Child height. Height tree, yeah. Then a little brother has one in his room and then she also has one in her room. But then it's like, I don't understand why you need four, four Christmas trees. trees. Why, why does a person, why does, I'm sorry, but why does a person need four trees? I don't understand though, like, I understand that like, some people really love Christmas and like going all out. And obviously if I have a kid and they like Christmas and like the decorations, then I'd obviously do more than what we do now. Because at the minute we have some lights in the window and one tree. But... Also, you have to consider as well, we don't really have a big player. Yeah, but and, like, and I would do more outside decorations or... We do? Yeah. We do? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, we'll get on to the last point of this in a minute. What outside decorations would you want? Well, like them next door, they're reindeer and Christmas presents. I want oh, reindeer. I... I want, you know, no, no, no. I, I want don't... light up penguins. <laughs> Do you want my mum will love you for that? And I want one on each side of my door so they can guard my door. <laughs> Do you know what? That's actually not a bad idea. I'm actually down for that. I'll I make don't, it look like, like a winter the... wonderland. <laughs> oh god. I don't like the presents that they have. They're too bright and I'm not and obnoxious. I think the reindeers are bright because it's like that intense white light where at least the presents are like a soft ready an orangey glow. Do you know what? I just know I've just noticed the presents, I haven't even noticed the reindeer. Yeah, they've got reindeer. Have they? Yeah. Oh, oh. But they have reindeer and no Santa Claus, so why is the presents there? That makes no sense. Reindeers can't deliver the presents without Santa Claus. <laughs> Maybe Santa Claus is a reindeer. <laughs> well, he just transforms on Christmas Day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. They kind of like, uh, yeah, pr pretty oh, much like ditto. I know this is going off what your subject is, yeah. but when you were a kid and you were told about Santa, did Santa come in through a chimney or did he have a magic key? We had a magic key that Santa used to get in everyone's house. It was like a master key for every house in the world. So what was the first one? There was a Santa, master key. So like a master key so Santa can go open any door in the world and get into the house uh, or did he come in through the chimney like traditional? I don't know. I never got, actually I never got asked that actually. Um, but we didn't have a trip. We didn't, I think my parents must have said chimney but it's like I must have said we don't have a chimney. I don't know, guys. What do you think? Um, tweet me. <laughs> Literally tweet me. I'll leave stuff. a comment. <laughs> yeah, on the YouTube video you can. Or, you know, DM me. Social medias are down below, you know. I don't really promote it that much, but there you go. Opportunity. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say master key because I literally don't have another answer. Well, a magic key, not a master key. I mean, it is well, a master it's, key. It is a master key. Yeah, but it's, they call it the magic key. It opens every door in the world, which I thought was a bit dangerous because I used to think, you know, like, you know, like night in the museum where things, like in Toy Story where things used to get up and move around, like in them and in objects, it's like, well, what happens if Santa Claus opens a door and there's like a dinosaur there or something? That's a bit yeah. dangerous. He could be, get, he could get eaten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very true. But actually, no, I'm going to end my point there because I think we actually covered quite a lot of stuff. But in general, um, just other ways to help, I've got some other things on my list which I'm going to quickly rattle off mm -hmm. here. Um, preparation. So basically helping the uh, person on the spectrum understand Christmas, so what it is, why we celebrate it. As, and especially if they're young as well, they don't understand Christmas and, you know, they don't understand the concept of Christmas. All they see is like stuff changing and like all of that stuff. You know, I think having an understanding of what Christmas is and stuff is actually quite helpful. Mm -hmm. Covered the routine, the presents, Christmas free zone. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, get Christmas in as part of the routine. Again, it just kind of elevates the point. If possible, chill on the lighting, chill on the decorations. Yeah. Because you can get a lot of quite mini minimalistic stuff these days. Yeah, you can, don't they? You can literally just get these random pop-up tree things, like what we none of us. So you basically just <sighs> yeah. pop it up and then it's like all decorated for you and you can choose to plug it in and put the lights on or not have the lights on, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, very true. 
And actually, actually, if you are going to someone else's house and you're taking your kid with you, you know, maybe arrive earlier than everyone else so they can um, help. It helps with the transition of being somewhere new, especially because, you know, they may not, you know, go out to see people that much or vice versa. Mm. Um, I know for me, I know for us, sorry, we get there quite early, which I'm <laughs> actually just going to say to you, it actually helps me a lot. Yeah. Because <laughs> it goes from quiet to, la uh, to busy. Rather but, than just being thrown straight into the busy. Yeah, yeah, and then I've got everyone like asking us like a million questions. Oh, oh, what did you get? Blah, blah, blah. It's, just, it's just like, well, I can just, you know, talk to one person and it just builds and builds and builds. And then as soon as there are loads of people, I can literally go on my phone and go on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I, sneak out, I sneak into the kitchen where the food is. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then lastly, just some other things to help. Just be considerate to the person's needs and also for you if you're the person or the parent or whatever the case may be, just asking for help, you know, if the need arises, you know. It's obviously a time of celebration and happiness and stuff, but you know, at the end of the day, we all just want to have a good day on Christmas Day and have a good Christmas period. Mm -hmm. We're up to the part of the podcast which I've been looking forward to recording and talking to you about since I came up with the idea. Well, I didn't come up with the idea. <laughs> uh, basically I saw it on a Jackbait podcast there, Jackbait Happy Hour. I love the podcast, literally it's been my saving grace throughout the entirety of lockdown and I guess if you want to listen to it on Spotify, I'll actually link it. Do you know what? Uh, I love the podcast and I think it's really, really great. Basically I'm ripping off the idea but I think it's actually a great thing because we are two people from the UK. Mm -hmm. Christmas dinner tier list. Yes. So, if you're watching this on YouTube, and it's going to happen, <laughs> basically there's going to be a tier list on screen, and as we go through, I'm going to be plopping the item into one of five tiers. So, first tier, we have God tier. Basically, mm -hmm. it's like the best of the best can't get any better. Mm -hmm. Second tier down, we have very good. The middle tier is average. So, like, take it or leave it. Yeah. Fourth tier, we're going to have meh. Like, you're less than satisfied. You're like, Ugh. So it's like, I'll eat it if it's there, but I'm not fussed about actually putting it on my plate. Yeah, whereas average, you're like, you're not you're not bothered either way. Yeah. The last tier is the sprout or the poo tier. <laughs> I'm going to say the sprout tier, because I think that's better. So, basically, how this is going to work is, I'm going to read out an item of food, which goes traditionally on a Christmas dinner. Mm-hmm. And basically, we come to a decision on where it goes on the tier list. Okay, so I think we might as well go big or go home. Turkey. Average. Average? I can take it or leave it. Like, I'm not a big meat bird eater anyway. Like, I know you don't like chicken. I know you don't like cooking chicken. I I'm know... paranoid about chicken, okay? I, I have a phobia of eating chicken. But why are you saying... Average. Because turkey kind of reminds me of chicken. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, I'll eat it if someone's made it and put it on my plate, but I wouldn't necessarily go out my way to pick it because my grandparents do different meats, so they usually do gammon mm. and turkey and sometimes roast beef, so I usually just go for the gammon or the beef. Actually, I was thinking of including other meats, but then I thought, no, but we'll actually do that. Mm. So, turkey for me, when it comes to a Christmas dinner, it's like the thing, though. Yeah, because it's a thing that everyone looks forward to every year because it's like, some people only eat turkey on Christmas Day. Yeah, I'm one of those people. I know some people eat turkey all the time, but for me, I rarely, rarely do. Mm. I rarely do. When I was actually planning this idea out for this Christmas tier list, well, dinner tier list, I was thinking that turkey would be God, but for me, I would just say very good because it depends on how the chicken the turkey the turkey <laughs> the turkey is cooked if it's bone dry and mm. stuff it's not pleasant you have to literally pour loads of gravy just pleasant it very good i'm not fussed out and take it or leave it but you like your turkey so no do you know what we'll go average we'll go with the average whoop, whoop. so turkey goes into average what about gammon 
that again, and I would say that's very good. Again, for me, I've always had turkey on a Christmas dinner. I never ever considered other meats mm. um, until meeting your family, where you'd obviously have gammon. Well, we only had started having gammon because Ruby wouldn't eat any other meat other than gammon. Yeah, true. And then me and my granddad both like roast beef, so it just became a thing of, well, I'm guessing we're getting a small joint of gammon, a small joint of roast beef, and a large turkey. Because <laughs> then Manella makes like different stews and meals out of them, mm -hmm. like all leftovers and stuff. So I don't really eat gammon a lot. No, neither do I. Um, I couldn't eat like I could eat like a steak, like a gammon steak. Well, I made a gammon joint and put it in a slow cooker, and you ate that. Yeah, but that was that was nice though because it, it was like it was slow all broke, cooked. It was yeah. slow cooked and broken down. Again, I want to say average. Mm. For me, it can be very, very like hammy, salty, salty. But I don't mind that though. Oh, no, I suppose we could just put it in the average then. Average. Yeah. Okay, average. Roast beef then. Oh, God, tear for me. I love roast beef. <laughs> I love a good slab of beef. Can I be honest? I'm actually gonna say average. Get out. <laughs> no. We're divorced. No. We're not we're not even we're not even married yet. Get your facts straight. The reason why I'm saying average is just because it's beef. Oh, I love beef though. Like proper roast beef joint. Oh, I love it. But beef is dry? Yeah, but that gives you an excuse to put loads of gravy on your plate. Uh, but then also... But mashed potatoes well, dry. But you put loads of gravy on mashed potatoes. No, it's creamy. There's a difference. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but also, also <laughs> with beef, you can get like little bits of like beef fat on the thing. Then you just cut it out. Yeah, but it's horrible. Why would people leave that on? Because the fat is what gives it the juice. You know, but why would you present that on a plate? Because it's what gives it the juice. It's the same as like, why do some people like cook, like, like pork and then eat the crackle in, like the pig yeah. skin once it's crunchy. Because it's what gives it its flavour. Uh, do you know what? I will meet you in the middle and say very good. Oh, Yay, very good. Can we move gammon to very good? Fine. Very good gammon. Very good beef. Meh to um average. Turkey average. If you were going to say meh to turkey, I, I would have <laughs> Average turkey average. Lamb. I've never had lamb. I love lamb. I've never tried it. I think it's really nice. I'll have to try it sometime. I'm just scared to order it in case I don't like it. Pretty much it's, it's like beef. But it's just come from a baby animal rather than a full grown animal. Yeah. I don't know because I've never had it. Average. Okay, we'll go average. To be honest, I'm not really that fussed with them. <laughs> like, it's nice, mm -hmm. but I don't get it like all of the time. Pretty much for me, I'm a I'm a chicken person. Which is really hard because I have a problem of eating chicken, so I don't really cook it often. I know, it's like the amount of times I want to say, oh, can we go to KFC? And you're like, uh, no, the chips. I like, I like KFC chips. Yeah, to be fair, the chips are alright. So, yeah, at the minute, that's where all the beef and turkey and whatever else is. The meats. The meats. Next item, pigs in blankets. Oh, I do love a pig in blanket. I would say, I want to say God, the God tier. That's actually something we can agree on. I'm saying God tier because honestly, I, well, actually, I was going to say I don't have them other times of the year apart from Christmas, but that's actually not true. I actually love pigs in blankets. But I think mm -hmm. what makes it special is the fact that they're like, chip a lot of sausages so they're like, like the little tiny ones yeah and you know it's tiny bits of bacon and you know the bacon's actually crispy like snapping in half crispy mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and it, yeah it's it's like you know crunchy on the outside then you get into the sausage and it's crispy on the outside but then it's soft and tender and meaty mm. and then, especially if it's like slightly spiced mm, yeah as well and you know I, I think I think I think we after we record this we should go as and buy some, <laughs> buy some pigs and blankets. <laughs> oh god no. Oh god no no. Uh, well would you also class sausage meat as well 
I really like sausage meat. Where it's like crunchy on the outside but soft in the middle. See, I never had sausage meat until I met you. Yeah, my granddad may love sausage meat. Um, it's basically just a sausage without the skin, so it's like mushy. But then yeah, when yeah. you cook it, it goes quite crispy on the outside. To be honest, actually, the first yeah I had, I actually mistaked it for stuffing, and I was like, oh, what's that? I was like, oh, it's sausage meat. And I was like, oh, what's sausage meat? I've never heard of sausage meat before. It was it was a complete and utter revelation. Um, Would you put it in very good at average though? Because I don't think it's god tier, but it is good. Oh no, it's, no, it's not god tier. Um, to be honest, I could take it or leave it because I've got I've got my pigs and blankets. I'm happy. Can we just go average? Okay, we'll average it then. Yeah, because I, I mean, I've, for me, it's good, but for you, it's a bit meh. So. But no, no, I'm not. I'm not actually saying meh. I'm actually saying average. Uh. Um, it's not god tier. I I wouldn't. I I just. I just don't think it needs it on a Christmas dinner. Now, next two items people would say are very similar. I would strongly disagree. Roast potatoes and mashed potatoes. They're not similar at all. Roast potatoes, for me, get them off my plate. Don't like them. Don't like it. Mashed potato. That's it pretty good. Do I have to marry you? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like the texture of roast potatoes. But for me, potatoes are supposed to be, like, mushy and soft. I don't like the fact that it's, like... It's like really card on the outside and then it's like sort really of really card. Hard. You, you said card. Hard. Hard, okay. And then it's like it's like not like I don't know, it's just it's weird. It's not weird. It is weird. It's not it's it's like eating chips. Or, or French fries. Yeah, but it's like having a really thick chip that's really dry. It's not dry, it's fluffy. It's not. It's fluffy and gorgeous. No, mashed potato is fluffy and gorgeous. No, it's it's literally splodge on a plate. I like it. Really just, I can't get away with the texture. But it's just essentially a massive chip. It's not for a chip when you bite into it, it's fluffy, it's light. A roast potato is like a rock on a plate and you have no, to like, it's not. it looks like a rock of potato stuck on a plate and the texture is awful. No, it's not. It is. It's not. It is. It's not. I can't, there's nothing you can do to change my mind about roast potatoes, I'm sorry. For me, it's get that right in the bottom tier. So you're actually saying sprout tier? Yeah. Are you actually going that far? For me, I'd rather have a Brussels sprout than a roast potato. Are you off your nut? <laughs> no, no. Well, I think very good. Well, it's not going anywhere above average, I'm afraid. Yes, it is. It's not. <laughs> if my roast beef couldn't go any good here, your, your roast potatoes is not going any good. Oh, God. Do you know what? I actually want to post this list. <laughs> When it goes, when this goes out, I want to actually get people's opinion. I want to get people's opinion. I just on can't it. get away with the texture of a roast potato. Oh god! Right. I tell you what, then for the roast for the roast potatoes, I will come down to you and go meh. And for mashed potato, average. Yeah. And the mashed potato has to have butter in it. It's as simple as that. Well, you know when I made mashed potato from scratch, and we you got that weird mashed potato masher. Was that yeah. was that smooth for you or lumpy? No, it was smooth. Right, good. It was gorgeous. Well, good. Just didn't want you to shame my mashed potato cooking. Well, to be fair, right, about that mashed potato masher, that was the only one they had in Asda. I what was I meant to do? Well, I just wanted the one with the handle with the mash on the bottom where you just manually mash it, but you got this contraption where you put potatoes in it and you got to squish right. it down. I'm going to put it on screen right now if you're watching on YouTube. Yeah. It makes, it, it was the only one that they didn't, didn't have like one of the other ones where you just literally grab it and go, near, near, die, potato, die. Like, you know, what was I meant to do? Fair dues. What's the next on the list? Parsnip. How do we feel about parsnips? Roast parsnip or mashed parsnip because you can mash it like mashed potato. Right, how, how would you do parsnip? How, I would right, do right. roast parsnips, like how you would like roast your carrots and roast your parsnips. Good, okay, I agree with that. Basically, mashed parsnip, I just don't see the point. You've already got mashed potato, why do you mm. need to mash parsnip? Or actually, turnips for that matter. Yeah. Why do you have to mash them? Don't know, don't really like turnip. We'll get on to turnip later, but parsnip, personally... I can take it, I'll leave it. I quite like 
quite like parsnip actually. Um, I would, I, it's not God, uh, it, the day that the vegetable becomes God tier. Um, I'm going to go average. Yeah. I feel like we've got a lot in average. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose of me, I can take it or leave it. I'm not fussed. Like, I'll eat it if it's on my plate, but I wouldn't personally go out my way and make it and put it on my plate. Right. Okay, so here's the vegetable with its own tier. Brussels sprouts. Brussels, Brussels sprouts. I don't mind Brussels sprouts. For me, the average. It needs to go in the bin. Sprouts in the sprout tier. No, you wouldn't let me put rose potatoes in the sprout tier. No, I have not have no <laughs> no. I I'm it's literally because, giving you everything. It's only now. because you get forced to eat Brussels sprouts on Christmas day. I don't like them. The little cabbages. What is there not to like? But this bitter and uh. Then that's why you mush it down a bit and put some gravy on it. No, I tell you, I tell you what, people don't like Brussels sprouts, and I'm one of those people that does not like Brussels sprouts. If it was done, if it was done in a different way, maybe I'd like it. Maybe roast Brussels sprouts. Yeah, because appar apparently, um, <laughs> weirdly enough, uh, Robbie Knox, <laughs> he was on the Christmas podcast of you know Happy Hour in 2019, after he said. It was a whole discussion about Brussels sprouts, and you actually said if you roast them, they actually taste nicer. Mm. So maybe if you know it was, I'll buy some Brussels sprouts and roast them for you if you want. <laughs> actually, actually, I would be quite interested to try that, but I want to go meh. Okay, we'll put them in meh. All right, I'm I'm giving you a lot here. Yeah, I, I'll go with meh for you. All right, thank you. Stuffing. God dear. Right, thank you. What kind of stuffing? Because you can get different types of stuffing. Well, my nana makes the sage and onion stuffing, which is quite, like, soft. We, our parents, get the different types of stuffing. We're, like, stuffing, like, a bit like stuffing balls, aren't they? And they're quite crispy. Yeah, well, they make it into stuffing balls. It comes as, like, a tube of stuffing. Mm. And normally, for us, it's chestnut and the other one... Wasn't it an apricot? <gasps> yeah, apricot and F. Well... No. No, not walnut. Apricot and... Oh. It's walnut and something. It's like a spice. Yeah. There was a spice in... Is it like ginger or something? Ah, must be. Apricot and ginger, maybe. It sounds familiar. Um, but I love stuffing because it, it adds an element of spice mm. and flavour to a Christmas dinner. I love my nana's homemade stuffing and the only time she really makes it now is Christmas really? so unless I go when I was on Christmas day for dinner or I go for Boxing Day leftovers it's the only time I ever get stuffing I like you know, the flavour I like the flavour of you know, stuffing I'm going to be honest mm -hmm. it is, it's quite nice but I prefer the texture of my parents and think it's it's crispy but then in the middle it's soft kind of like a battered fish where it's crispy on the outside and then soft silky fish in the middle mm. it's delightful I like your parents the stuff that your parents get but I do like my, my nana's homemade stuffing okay so we've got an agreement any type kind of stuffing goes automatically and got, got to you yeah okay so the next item carrots I do like carrots. a carrot you like a carrot I like a good carrot I would say they're, they're not god tier but I would say they're good. Now, I think my mum would disagree with you because literally that was the only vegetable that I would eat regardless of whether it was Christmas Day or not. I still love carrots. Yeah, I like carrots. I love carrots. I love carrots. And I'm going to agree with you. Very, Very good. good. Turnips. Now, you've already talked about how you don't really like them. I don't like them. For me, turnip can be in the Brussels sprout tier for me. The sprout. The sprout tier. The sp Sprout tier. Ooh, um, Funny enough, the sprouts didn't even get put in the sprout tier. <laughs> yeah, I'm just not going to comment on that. Um, turnips, I can take them or leave them. So, meh. by default, meh. Yeah, meh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, I've included this one because I, I kind of want to get your thoughts. Red cabbage. I like red cabbage. I wouldn't say I love it, but I can eat it. I was going to say, I think... I think some people pickle their red cabbage. Yeah, you can get pickled red cabbage. Yeah. I actually love red pickled. I actually love pick pick. Pickled. I I actually love pickled red cabbage. I like red cabbage. I'm not fond of pickled. So where would you put cabbage then? The red cabbage specifically. I don't say good as long as it's not pickled. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Right. Peas. Garden peas or mushy peas? Now this is where I'm going to have the debate with you. <laughs> I like garden peas over mushy peas. Do you? Yeah, I prefer garden peas over mushy peas. I always thought you liked mushy peas. I do like mushy peas, but I prefer, if I had the choice, I'd choose garden peas over mushy peas. See, for me, I hate mushy peas with an absolute passion. If it was mushy peas... Just get in the bin. I don't. I don't even. I don't even want it. And that's kind of why, when it comes to Christmas dinner, the nans are like, if peas are an option. But actually, for like anything, like yeah, they make mushy peas. I, I just can't hear it. I would say peas are probably with carrots. To be honest. What very good. Yeah. Do you know what I think? I'm gonna agree on that with you. Gravy. God dear. God dear, you can't have a Christmas dinner without gravy. <laughs> oh, thank God. Thick gravy or runny gravy? Thick. Those are the thick gravy. See, when it comes to this, people can sometimes have runny gravy. If it's like bath water, it's like, what's the point? Yeah. If As long as it's thick enough that like, you know, when you pour it, you can see it goop. Not yeah. like so thick that it's like tar, but thick enough that you can see it like and it's like running off your plate oh like silky yeah oh god i'm just imagining a really silky gravy on, on top of mashed potato because the roast potatoes just aren't there <laughs> <laughs> and the peas and carrots <laughs> yeah uh yeah no for me also it has to be thick gravy but actually as well i tell you what what kind of gravy? Because you can get obviously get meat gravy. But well, traditionally, I thought you were supposed to use the fat from the meat you're cooking. So, like, if it's beef, you add the beef, like, the oils and stuff that are collected at the bottom of the pan. I thought you are supposed to put yeah. a little bit of that mm -hmm. in to, like, sort of get that taste. So, instead of, like, using a stock cube, you use a bit of that in. Yeah, yeah. So, I think it just depends on the kind of meat you're cooking or what kind of thing you put in. So, obviously, if you're cooking beef you'd put a bit of the beef juice in if you were cooking turkey you'd put a bit of the turkey juice in if you were cooking goose you'd put a bit of goose fat in yeah i guess so for me though i'll tell you what i really like what gravy i actually really like um toby carvery mm. and they do actually a very very nice mint gravy actually it's really really nice yeah because like there's other condiments that you haven't mentioned that you can get like applesauce Mint sauce, cranberry. Right, okay. Well, gravy is obviously in God's God tier. No questions For asked. For me, the ones I just mentioned can all get off the table. Oh, what, the condiments? Yeah. <laughs> don't like cranberry, don't like mint, don't like apple sauce. Right, okay. Okay, apple, sprout tier. Yeah. Cranberry can go sprout, in sprout tier. tier. I, I don't, I've never tried them. Never liked the thought of them. Just no. no. Can we put mint at least in May? Yeah. Because I actually like mint quite. I actually like mint. Mm. And I know for some people, you know, you obviously just put the mint sauce on top of lamb. I literally put it on top of chicken. But this thing, though, traditionally you put stuffing with like turkey and chicken based bird type dishes. But I like putting stuffing with like beef. Like, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. You know? Uh, but yeah, I, I like mint sauce. So can we at least put it in meh? Yeah. Yorkshire puddings, do they belong on a Christmas dinner? I feel like they should. I don't think they do, that's why I've not included I it. I think you should have included it. I just don't see the point. What's the point? You put them on a Sunday dinner, not yeah, but Christmas dinner. A Christmas dinner is just a glorified Sunday dinner. No, it's not. It is. No, it's not. It it's is. Christmas dinner. Yeah, but it's... It's completely it's different a, to all of the other days of the year. It's Christmas a dinner for Christmas it's Day. It's still a roast dinner. You just having either extra stuff that you wouldn't normally have on it, or you are taking stuff off that you would you would normally have on a normal day. Okay, right. We'll conclude with Yorkshire puddings. I haven't put it in the list, but since we're talking about it, God dear. Just sprout here. No. Sprout here. I Why? don't like them. Well, I cook them when I make our beef dinner, and you don't twist. I know, but that's because I love you. <laughs> so you really don't want me to make Yorkshire puddings next time? I don't mind them. So <laughs> I, they're not I'd sprouty write... than other. <laughs> I'm just thinking in terms of Christmas, I just don't like the idea of having them on a Christmas dinner. Any other occasion, yeah, I'll, I'll tolerate them. Unless it's like, I don't know, I, they're just burnt, I'll give them to you. Yeah. You know, or something like that. Personally, 
And also, to be fair as well, when we make them, we don't have them all the time. True. You know, so it's it's kind of like a novelty for me to have them. So I just get them out of the freezer and warm them up. I don't make them from scratch. That's yeah. too much effort. <laughs> that, that, that also helps as well, to be fair. Uh, not saying you're a bad cook. It's just, you know, you know. You once told me you prefer my cooking over your own mother's. And I still do. Because <laughs> I'm talking. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Right, can we agree to disagree and put Yorkshire puddings, even though I don't think they belong on a Christmas dinner plate, in average? Fine. I'm not happy about it, but okay. Well, quite honestly, you absolutely kicked me in the nuts with the roast potatoes. Okay, fine, we'll put them in average. Right. So there you go, that is the completed, the unmasked podcast Christmas tier list for the Christmas dinner. Don't hate on us. <laughs> Obviously, everyone has different opinions, but this is just ours. <laughs> well, yeah, it's ours. But it's a joint one, because obviously there were certain things that we would put in different tiers. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Actually, do you know what? I might actually post where we would actually put our preferred, if it was just us. Yeah. I might actually do that, actually. What, split it off and have yours on one side, mine on the other? Yeah, or just post them separately. I don't uh, know. Yeah. I don't know. We'll when, think about it. When I get around to the video, I'm, uh, I'll come back to you yeah. on that. But anyway, the last thing I wanted to talk about is a top three Christmas movies and songs. Because for me personally, movies at Christmas, movies about Christmas, I don't know, it really helps get the point across that Christmas is great. Yeah. And over the years, I've grown to love Christmas songs. And yeah, I don't know. I don't... And, I, and actually, weirdly enough, over 2020, I have listened to Christmas songs before Christmas. Same. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> like what? Like, well, I wouldn't say like way before Christmas, but from like September time, I s but listened to the odd one. Oh, no. No. I was listening to Christmas songs in f February, then in July. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, not because I am obsessed with Christmas songs. It was just, I don't know, certain ones, which are actually in my list. So... Actually, do you want to start with Christmas songs or Christmas movies? Do you want to go... We'll do songs. All right. My first one is going to be Chris Rye. So R-E-A, Driving Home for Christmas. Mm. It's just a brilliant song. That's like, is that like your number three spot or is that your number one spot? No, that's my number three. Mm -hmm. That's my number three spot. I don't know. It's just really... Christmassy and you know I suppose love... it's quite fitting because obviously because you live here with me and you're originally from further up the north yeah. it's a case of when we do go at your parents on Christmas day and when we're driving it's a fitting song because you well I'm technically driving you home for Christmas <laughs> pretty much yeah uh, pretty pretty much yeah um, but I, I love the, the piano and the guitar in it as well it's just really nice it's such a nice song not gonna lie uh, my second place one, Paul McCartney's Wonderful Christmas Time. Mm. I think for me it's the synths. I think for me Is that it's... the one that's like simply having a, a wonderful, wonderful Christmas, Christmas time. time? Yes. It's an absolutely brilliant song because of the synthesizers. Synthes I can't say that word, guys. I'm sorry if that's annoying you, but the synths in that song are just... As soon as the song comes on... You know what it is. That's what I like about that song. Yeah. And, and actually, it's one of the only songs that I listen to that I know the words to. And that's actually incredibly rare for me because I never listen to the words. Yeah. I just love that song. It's so good. And also, as well, just to put this in here, local band called Shields did a really great Christmas cover. Well, they, did, they covered the song, A Wonderful Christmas Time, um, in like a live capacity, it's really, really good. I'll link it actually down below. So, you know, if you like this song and want to hear it in a different way, there you go. Happy Christmas. I'm pretty much Father Christmas at this <laughs> point. Honestly, really great cover. Absolutely awesome. Love hearing it every time I come around to Christmas time, when we get to Christmas time, I should say. Yeah. Oh, and my number one spot. Do you know what? I'm going to give it to Wham! Last Christmas. Honestly, it's a song that's just grown on me over the years. And actually, last year, I found this really nice 
piano version of the song. It's so good. I'll link it down below as well. It's just really great. It hmm. gave the song just a nice kind of feeling. And it's one of those other songs that I remember the lyrics to. I know people hate on the song, but yeah. I, I like I like it. What about you? So my third, I can't remember what the name of the song is. No, I can help you. It's... <sighs> It's, I think it's called, is it just called Merry Christmas Everyone? Oh, Shaken Stevens. Yeah. Like, do, 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 do. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Everyone. That one. That one. Shaken Stevens is Merry Christmas Everyone. That would be my third spot. That's a really good song, actually. Yeah. I really forgot about that. <laughs> um, Number two? I can't remember who sings it, but I'm pretty sure it's called Stop the Cavalry. Oh, stop the cavalry. At the beginning it goes do 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 Yeah, that one. singing about being what Christmas time. I can't remember who sings it. Uh, it says on here, John uh, Louis? John, yeah, John, John and Louis. John and Louis. John and Louis. Stop the cavalry. Yeah. I just like it because it's not an overly played Christmas song. Like, they don't really play it on the radio. Yeah, that's true. That's true, I So guess. when you hear it, it's like that little gem where you think, oh yeah, I know that song. Yeah, actually, that's why I like um, Driving Home for Christmas, because it doesn't get played that often. No. And neither does um, Wonderful Christmas Time, to be honest. Can I guess your first choice? Before you guess it, I want to say I know at the minute it's kind of a controversial song, but because of the certain... Word in it. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah. Right, yeah. Like, I can understand why some people f do find it offensive, but at the same time, it's a bit like it's been around for 30 odd years. What's the song, um, in case people haven't figured it out yet? Um, Fairy Tale of New York. And that is by The Pogues and Christine McCall. Yeah. But I love, I love that song. It's my favourite Christmas song. One, because it's also my mum's favourite Christmas song. Mm -hmm. But two, it kind of. It kind of reminds me of my dad, in a sense, right, okay. because the guy in the song is like how he's like trying to like basically give this woman her dream, but he kind of messes it up all the time because obviously he's like an alcoholic, he's always like placing bets on the wrong thing, yeah. ends up in the prison on Christmas Eve, which actually did happen to my dad one year. With the oh. neighbour's dog. <laughs> it was oh, just... Because oh, I'm like... Yeah. I guess, like... My dad's not a horrible person. He just had mixed up priorities. And it kind of reminds me a bit of that. Fair enough. Like, even, like, the arguing back and forth. Like, mm. I know it's supposed to be, like, happy time of Christmas, but it... It doesn't make me sad, the song. It's, like, kind of a bit, like... It makes me giggle a little bit, because it's a bit, like, that's so, like, something... Like, that is so my dad. Yeah. Oh, that's fair enough. Okay, so next top three Christmas films. Are you gonna go first this time? I think you should go first since I went first last time. Well, I'll go from one to three this time because my favorite Christmas movie of all time is Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Mm. Not the old black and white one. The slightly newish one. The one that was like ninety four. I think it was made. The one with the with... girl that plays Matilda. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's the one with uh, Richard Attenborough. Um, Richard Attenborough is the guy who played the person in Jurassic Park, who was the owner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the character's name either, but Richard Attenborough. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good choice, actually. Yeah, that's yeah. my first one. Oh, number two, Deck the Halls. That's... I like it. Well, I like it because it's got Danny DeVito in, but I think it's like... So I'm like... One of the newer Christmas movies, and it's funny, but it's not overly silly. Yeah. Where I find, I know, like, loads of people love the film Elf, but for me that can be overly silly. Mm-hmm. I know some people who repeatedly watch Elf, and it's just like, you just can't. No, I don't mind it, but it's not my top three. Okay. So um, And then my third... I don't really know for a third one. Well... There's things like The Grinch, Home Alone... I do like The Grinch, but I wouldn't say it was like... And I do like Home Alone, but I wouldn't put them in like... I oh, know, I'm just giving you suggestions. Yeah. Um, For number three, I'd have to probably say I love Actually. Yeah, I was going to say, you introduced me to that because I'd never seen it. In that well, that's my mum's 
curious about it. That's my mum's favourite Christmas movie. Oh, is it? I don't love, love it, so that's why like, it's not higher up my list, but I can watch it. That's fair enough. Well, in terms of me, I'm going to go same order as you, I think. Uh, so, first to third. Um, number one Christmas film for me, the Santa Claus the movie, or Santa Claus the movie, I should say. It just sings nostalgia to me. And yes, it probably is not the best Christmas film because of just how predictable the plot is and stuff, but I like it. It makes me feel nostalgic. So I do agree with you with Elf. I can't watch it. Yeah. <laughs> no, single, yeah, it's just, it's just rubbish. Number two, I would say Deck the Holes. Mm. You introduced me to that a few years ago. It's just great. I love it. I love it as a Christmas film. It's just fun. And I love the contrast between uh, Danny DeVito and uh, Matthew Broderick, who plays the other character. Yeah. So, yeah, happy days. And for a third one, I don't actually know for a third one, I'm going to say A Christmas Carol. Hmm. But it's the one with Patrick Stewart in it, because I like Patrick Stewart. <laughs> That's the that's literally the only reason. I just like the story of the Christmas Carol. It just works for Christmas. I quite like it. And you were saying you wanted to change your third one. Yeah, I think I'll take Love Actually out and put the Call Me Claus movie in, the one with Whoopi Goldberg in it. Right, for those who don't know, this is another one that got introduced to me. Yeah. Uh, it's basically where Santa Claus is dying or something like that. And they have no, to find... he, he, wants, he basically wants to retire, but he needs to find someone to take his place before you can retire. So he basically, it, it, there's only certain people that can take over and they have to have this like certain Christmas sort of spirit. Mm -hmm. So when uh, Whoopi Goldberg's character, when she was a child, Santa found her and she like had this like golden glow or something. Then yeah. as she got older, she sort of like lost it. But then he comes back and pretends to be a TV Santa to advertise products for people to buy for Christmas and helps her find her Christmas spirit again so she can take over. Yeah, and the funny thing is it's all set in LA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I like that one because it's literally just Whoopi Goldberg. You can't go wrong with Whoopi Goldberg, I don't think. But yeah, so that is our top three Christmas films, Christmas songs. Do let us know what your favourite Christmas songs or films are. Or you know, if you dislike everything about Christmas, you know, let, let us know either way. But I think, to be honest, we're going to wrap this up because we've been recording for nearly two hours. Yeah. But I've had a lot of fun. Me too. To be honest, I'm going to probably do this again next year. It's actually been quite a lot of fun. Actually, yeah. It was nice actually talking about Christmas and, I don't know, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to Christmas more now. Yeah. yeah. And I hope you guys listening are as well. To be honest... With this podcast, you know, make sure you follow it, you know, and if you're listening on Apple, do leave a review, you know, and leave stars, five stars, obviously would be great. Share yeah. the podcast, all that stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, give this video a like and comment, you know, whatever you want about the podcast, you know, keep it relevant if you can. And, yeah, if you want to follow me on social media, everything's linked down below. Make sure you follow the Indie Andy channel on YouTube, you know, subscribe, all that jazzy stuff. You know, just do you, guys. Just do you, you know. Anything to help the podcast would be greatly appreciated. It's also my birthday soon. I just thought I'd put that out there. <laughs> so, if you really want to make my birthday wishes come true, Subscribe, like, follow. <laughs> <laughs> That's helping me, not you. Um, I don't know. Say happy birthday to Nicola in the comments if you get to this point. If if you do, then I know you're a true fan. <laughs> Yay. Uh, but anyway, guys, this is the end of the Unmasked podcast for this episode. Thank you so much for joining. And until next time, see ya later, my peeps. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. Bye-bye.